BioWare has finally revealed the name of the latest title in the Dragon Age series, Dragon Age Dreadwolf. While no official release date has been confirmed alongside Dragon Age 4's title announcement, the name Dreadwolf is an anagram for Fade World. If you played Inquisition, then you already know the relevance of the name Dreadwolf, so the title may not have been much of a surprise. But if you're new to the series, or just not up on your lore, you should really get an idea of just who Solus is. So let's back up and talk a little bit about who Solus is in Dragon Age Inquisition. He is an elven outlaw mage operating outside the Edicts of the Chantry, the dominant religious organization in Thetis, and the world setting of Dragon Age. Although he is clearly elven, he doesn't identify himself as either Dalish or City Elf, but posing as an apostate from a small village, he claims that he spent his days wandering the wilderness and exploring the Fade. He will not talk much about himself, but he's more than willing to discuss his journeys through the Fade. As an apostate, Solus tells you that he taught himself magic since he had no contact with the Circle of Magi or even the Dalish. He has a special interest in the Fade, the Fade being a metaphysical realm tied to Thetis, but that is separated by the Veil. While most Thedosians are taught by the Chantry to fear the Fade and anything pertaining to spirits or demons, Solus embraces it and seems to take every opportunity to learn and talk about it. Solus approached the Inquisition in its early days after the explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes and offered his services. He spent his time studying and healing the prisoner who had escaped from the Fade with a mysterious mark on their hand. He stabilized that mark and saved the life of the future Inquisitor. He then helps the Inquisitor to seal a small rift shortly after they meet and then follows them to the temple itself to close the first and largest rift, which Solus theorizes would stabilize the breach. After the Inquisitor successfully enlists the help of either the mages or the Templars, Solus assisted the Inquisitor with closing the breach itself. And when Corypheus revealed himself at Haven, it was Solus who explained, in a private conversation with the Inquisitor, that the orb that the Darkspawn Magister coveted was an elven artifact of great power called a foci. And he worries that if the orb's origin were to be revealed, it would have negative consequences for the reputation of the elven people, who are already not treated well. He then guides the Inquisitor to Skyhold, which is an unused fortress located in the Frostback Mountains that he says the Inquisition can claim as its new headquarters. Solus fought side by side with the Inquisition right up until Corypheus' defeat, after which he is terribly upset that the focus has been destroyed, and he then leaves without even saying goodbye. And although Liliana and her entire spy network have searched for the mage, they found no trace of him. It's not until one of the last scenes in Dragon Age Inquisition that fans learn that Solus is, in fact, the dread wolf Fen'Harel. This is revealed by Flemeth, who carries a wisp of the elven all-mother, Mithal. This also reveals to him to be not just a member of the ancient elves, but actually a member of the Evanuris, the elven pantheon. Flemeth remonstrates with Solus about losing the orb. He tells her regretfully that he, when he awoke, he was too weak to control it, and thus he had allowed Corypheus to find it and activate it, thinking that the magic would kill him, and then Solus could then retrieve the orb and use it. Mithal slash Flemeth and Solus embrace each other, and they commiserate for a moment. And then Solus takes, or is given, Flemeth's power, an act that appears to kill the body that was housing Mithal, but seems to fully reignite his powers as Fen'Harel, the Dread Wolf. When Solus explained that he was too weak to unlock the foci after waking from his long slumber, he also said that he knew he should pay the price for those actions, but that the elven people needed him and he had a duty to them. With Mithal's power combined with his own, though, now, the next step in Solus's plan can begin. And it's Solus the Dread Wolf that concerns us for the next Dragon Age game. So, what is the Dread Wolf? The Dread Wolf also known as Fen'Harel, 
is known commonly among the Dalish elves as their pantheon's god of betrayal and rebellion. According to Dalish lore, Fenharel was kin to the Evanuris and their enemies, the Forgotten Ones. Fenharel was able to move freely between them until one day he tricked both groups by offering them a false truce and then locking them away by raising the veil between the Fade and the mortal world. You'll find out in the Temple of Mythal while you're playing Inquisition that their beliefs about Fen'Harel were not quite accurate, and that he was really more focused on rebellion than betrayal. His main belief was and is the right of all free-willed people to exist, which is in total opposition to that of the other members of the Evanuris. Discovering the truth about Solus's supposed betrayal brings the discovery that the gods worshipped by the Dalish elves were merely powerful mortal mages who enslaved Elvenkind and bound them with the Valislin, that is, the marks on the Dalish people's faces. Solus, not being a member of the creators, sought to free the enslaved, which caused his peers to look at him with disdain and call him Fen'Harel, the dread wolf, an insult which he embraced as a badge of honor. Mithal was the only Evanuris to see the error of their ways, but in their lust for more power, the other members of the Pantheon murdered the All-Mother. So Solus trapped them in the Fade as a punishment for their actions. Unfortunately, forming the Veil had the unintended consequences of destroying the Elven connection to magic, their immortality, and their entire culture. Now, to be fair, there were already problems with the Tevinter by the time Solus acted, though his actions did fatally injure their culture and enabled the Tevinter to sweep in and conquer and enslave the Elven people and destroy the great Elven city of Arlathan. Solus admits that the creation of the Veil led to irreparable damage to, the, to Elven kind. They lost not just their immortality, but much of their magic and the many cultural marvels and advancements that were reliant on having a connection to the Fade. At their conversation at the end of Trespasser, he declares to the Inquisitor that he would walk the solitary path known as the Dinan Shirel and restore his people no matter the cost. And in fact, he's already brought many into his cause as well. His willingness to raise the elves back to their rightful place of power attracts a lot of elven followers. Taking control over the Alluvian network, which the elves once used to travel, the elves who once served the Inquisition began mysteriously disappearing, having joined forces with Fen'Harel as his agents. In one last act of brutal kindness, Solus expresses affection and sorrow for what must come, and then prevents the Inquisitor's mark from being fatal by removing their hand altogether, and then he disappears. Solus's plan to tear down the veil sound disastrous at best, and with the next game's title referencing the Dread Wolf, it's clear he's going to be, if not the game's primary antagonist, at least one of its main ones. What's less obvious is what his plot to rise to power might mean for Thetis. Is it possible that in restoring the people to glory, he'll achieve what he tried to prevent the Evanuris from doing, that is, destroy all of Thetis? And in case you're wondering if an Inquisitor who became Solus's lover might have had any influence in stopping him from destroying the world, don't get your hopes up. As a romance option for an elven female Inquisitor, Solus was pretty slow to warm to the idea of falling in love, and although he does come to genuinely love an elven Inquisitor, his love will not sway him from what he regards as his sworn duty, even though he knows that in doing so, he'll break her heart and he will truly then be alone. In Trespasser, even a love interest Inquisitor who offers to help him with his plan is rejected, albeit gently, so he clearly seems utterly devoted at all costs to what he regards as his duty to restore his people. So, regardless of one's relationship with Solas during Inquisition, he will be your foe in Dreadwolf, even if both you and he are brokenhearted that it is so. So, if Solas gets the veil down, and I predict that he will, I think that like some of his other actions, it's going to have consequences that get out of hand and, that's, and that will introduce the actual antagonist of Dreadwolf. Because like I've said repeatedly, I don't think Solus is the main baddie of the next Dragon Age. I think Solus's story is on a redemptive arc, but that is a topic for another video. Anyway, with the Fade and Thetis now reunited, demons would be let loose on the world. The Black City and whatever's lurking there would be reconnected to the world. The Evanuris would be released and would likely try to reestablish their empire. 
We don't know how magic will be changed. I mean, consider that right now, Solus regards the Elven and magic users as almost akin to Tranquil because they're so far removed from the magical wonders of the world that he's from. Current mages would likely have no idea how to control that kind of magic. Imagine the chaos in Tevinter. Suddenly having no barrier between the Fade and the Waking World would definitely cause chaos for the spirits who find themselves surrounded by mortal people and definitely for the people themselves to be now surrounded by spirits and demons. Supposedly, Solus has a plan to deal with this, although... If you recall, Solus tends to not think these things through all the way, as evidenced by him creating the veil in the first place with its unintended consequences, and then giving the orb to Corypheus in the first place. He's relentlessly devoted to grand actions that address some injustice or another, but he really doesn't have a great track record, does he? Anyway, there's so little official information that the real fun right now is looking at all of the creative theories Dragon Age fans have. If you have a good theory, let me know in the comments below, because I'd love to do a video all about various fan theories for Dragon Age Dreadwolf, so let me have them. In the meantime, let me know what you think about this video. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your day.